In this video, I'm going to talk about the absorption of vitamin B1. Uh, so this is actually vitamin B1 here. Uh, that's thiamine. And so vitamin B1 looks like this. So this is the structure of vitamin B1. And so the thing to kind of notice on here that will be uh, relevant in a little bit is this part here, this, these phosphate groups. So this is actually the uh, thiamine pyrophosphate. So pyrophosphate being these two phosphates on here. Uh, but you can also have thiamine monophosphate and thiamine triphosphate. Uh, and so kind of like with vitamin C, I was a little surprised at how little there actually is about thiamine absorption. So, uh, you know, once again, there wasn't any structures of the the transporters. So these are the thiamine transporters here, THTR1, THTR2, and then the THTR1 here. Uh, and there, you know, there just wasn't that much about these. Uh, but, you know, we can go through this anyway. So uh, we have the thiamine pyrophosphate here, or we can have the thiamine. Uh, and so in the small intestine, the thiamine pyrophosphate is is dephosphorylated into thiamine before it's taken up either by the THTR1 or THTR2 so that it enters the enterocyte as thiamine. And then this THTR1 then transports it out of the uh, the basal part of the cell into the blood circulation there. All right, so we can kind of look at this a little bit in a little bit more detail. So once again, we have these THTR1 and 2 and the THTR1. So, uh, so we have the, the 1 and 2 in the apical membrane, so in the, the intestinal lumen, and then the THTR1 in the basal membrane here. Uh, and so these are uh, symporters with the H plus here. So both of, in both directions, we are moving uh, these uh, thiamines through these transporters using these hydrogen plus, these H plus proton gradients here. Uh, and then once we get into the other cells, I'm not going to go into too much detail with this here because I'll be talking about that in future videos, but you can see there are all these ways of phosphorylating and dephosphorylating the thiamine. So we have like this TPK1 and this ACPP and so forth that uh, use ATP to uh, turn these into uh, thiamine pyrophosphate and thiamine triphosphate. Uh, but the, the ultimate uh, sort of destination for this is the mitochondria here where thiamine is involved in a lot of the sugar metabolisms like the Krebs cycle and I believe it's used in uh, the pyruvate, uh, pyruvate metabolism. But anyway, that's all for future videos. Uh, so there is this in the small intestine, the THTR1 and 2, but I also found another paper that said that there is actually this transporter here that they call the human thiamine pyrophosphate transporter, or HTPPT, that is responsible for the absorption of the microbiota generated uh, thiamine pyrophosphate in the large intestine. And so the bacteria, the microbiota in the large intestine generate this uh, thiamine pyrophosphate and excrete it. And then humans actually have this transporter in the large intestine to actually take up that thiamine pyrophosphate in the large intestine. All right, so if we go through this, so dietary thiamine is mainly in the form of phosphate derivatives. And before absorption, these are converted to free thiamine by intestinal phosphatases. So phosphatases are enzymes that remove phosphates from things, where kinases are enzymes that add phosphates to molecules.
All right, so mammalians utilize the THTR1 and THTR2 to transport thiamine. The THTR1 appears to function at a micromolar range, whereas the 2 appears to function at a nanomolar range. And so the THTR2 binds the thiamine a lot tighter than the THTR1. And so it will actually be saturated at lower concentrations than the THTR1. So both transporters are expressed in the human small and large intestine. So they, they, we do have these also in the large intestine. And the expression of THTR1 is higher than that of THTR2, with THTR1 found at both the apical and basolateral membranes of enterocytes. All right, so expression of the THTR2 protein was found to be restricted to the apical membrane only. So free thiamine is converted to thiamine pyrophosphate at the, by the action of the TPK1, which is thiamine pyrophosphokinase. So once again, kinase is something that adds phosphates to molecules at the cytosol and dephosphorylation of thiamine pyrophosphate to TMP, thiamine monophosphate, and thiamine by ACPP, so that's the prostatic acid phosphatase. At higher concentrations of thiamine, simple passive diffusion takes place. Uh, so this part actually talks about sort of what happens after absorption, so I'm not going to go too much into it here. All right, so this, these are uh, actually some kinetics studies here, and this is actually looking at the competition of thiamine here, so thiamine uptake with metformin uptake. So metformin is something that people who have type 2 diabetes take to help control uh, blood sugar, but these are actually taken up by the the human THTR2, uh, so they're taken up by the THTR2, so they take up thiamine and metformin. What they have here is the uptake of the thiamine, which is represented by the closed circles here, and then the control, which was just a, an empty vector by these open squares here. And so this is a, a time trial for that here for thiamine, and then this is for the metformin. So looking at it uh, at different concentrations of thiamine and metformin, we see here that the thiamine uh, appears to be, or it appears to have a much uh, lower V max as well as, uh, as well as a sort of looser, uh, a looser bind to it, whereas the metformin seems to bind more tightly and has a higher V max. Uh, then over here, we have the thiamine uptake percent uh, as we increase the metformin there. And so we can see that this is that the metformin is actually inhibiting thiamine uptake from the THTR2 there. Uh, and so over here, so this is looking at the oral thiamine plasma concentration versus time after eating here. So the concentration of thiamine in whole blood from 0 to 10 hours after 100 milligrams, 500 milligrams, or 1500 milligrams of oral thiamine. So we can see that somewhere between 2 and 4 hours, so around 4 hours is where the blood concentrations of thiamine are highest after uh, after taking one of these uh, supplements here. So taking the 100 milligram, 500 milligram, or 1500 milligram uh, supplements here. So yeah, that was, uh, like I said, everything there is, uh, well, not probably not everything there is, but it's everything I could find about uh, thiamine absorption.
uh, like I said, there was surprisingly little about it. But kind of the take-home message, I think, is represented by this image here, where the thiamine is uh, dephosphorylated into free thiamine, uh, and then it's taken up by the THTR1 and THTR2 into the enterocyte, uh, where it then goes and through the THTR1 is transported into the blood in order to be moved about to the rest of the body. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found this video interesting and I will see you in the next one.